yeah thank you for the show in the first place uh griffin actually was the one i think that recommended this happening so appreciate it buddy um i think that this you know i, I guess i should probably start with what we want this show to end up being which is to me i want to really kind of hit on bridging the gap between the oil and gas industry in particular and bitcoin mining and help educating the industry to what we're doing and what we can do for the industry yep. and and they fit together so nicely and i think we'll end up talking about that today but um i think that the oil and gas industry needs to realize that there are professionals in this space and uh there's a lot more going on than what they may be aware of and that it's going to continue to grow and going ahead and getting it, making it part of their their portfolio or their plans now is going to put them ahead in the future. Um, and it really won't change much with what they do currently. So that's what I w hope that we can do, um, not only just from this episode, but from the show in general, yeah. is really kind of help educate them on all that well, stuff. We do like so. a brief background on you and your yeah. experience, and then we'll dive into both Griffin and uh, Gideon. All right. Yeah. Well, um, I'm from Missouri originally, so I did not know shit about oil and gas. <laughs> and uh, my dad's a, he was a high school basketball coach, became a college coach. And uh, my family was all dairy farmers. And my mom's side was like commercial fishermen. And yeah, it was just kind of uh, not the background that you would have thought considering what I've been doing for a career now. So when I moved down from Missouri, I uh, I ended up you know coaching high school ball for a little while, and then went to law school. And while I was in law school, I uh, met a guy that was a landman, and I had no freaking idea what that was <laughs> at all. I and so, but he seemed cool and uh, laid back guy, Jared Jones. He's Shout actually, out to Jared. You, yeah, you know J Rod. <laughs> and uh, so I went up to him and just talked to him afterwards for a little bit, and was like, hey man, you know what? What is a landman? And he was like, oh, yeah, we're working on oil and gas. And I go and talk to people. And I was like, oh, OK, that sounds like something I could do. That's I I never had even really known a lawyer before I went to law school. And so like realizing that, like, OK, I, I don't know what I'm going to do after I get out of school. I better figure it out early on. And uh, so I was like, well, I'm going to go try to chase that down and ended up getting a job at Anadarko right out of school and um did that for a while it was great love that place learned a lot um early on and and then went on to indigo minerals and then got in the private equity side raised some money started a couple of different companies um and uh then while i was at my last one century oil and gas uh we ended up putting a bitcoin mine out on one of our sites and uh just after time it was and the only reason we did it was to keep our oil production on and uh but over time i started just kind of looking at it and was like man i wonder how much money you're making on this turned out it was like seven bucks an m and at the time we were doing about a dollar an m so uh i was like oh this is this has some legs on it i'm gonna try to raise some money and go do this and talk to leachman ryan leachman he was at century as well and uh you know oil had went negative too it was like april 2020 and we're like dude we gotta figure something it's a great out. time yeah 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 <laughs> fun time and ryan's biggest thing was like i freaking love wyoming i do not want to move away from here like yeah, if we can get some money together, I don't care because we don't know what was going to happen. And uh, so we ended up getting some money together, started J Energy and yeah, I grew the company, did real well. Um, and then we just kind of, you know, it came to time to move on and do different things. And Ryan went back to oil and gas, which, you know, this is first love. And he's, he's and it really is solidified that he's going to be able to stay in Wyoming. So I think yeah. it's the biggest thing for him. Um, but, you know, he's still part of the Bitcoin world, too. So. Um, but he and I, you know, we, he ended up going there and then I wanted to get kind of back in the legal industry because I was getting so many people reaching out about, uh, you know, getting help on putting deals together or try, just trying to figure out how to get in the space. And I was like, well, man, look, I, I love helping people. Um, and probably to a fault because I ended up spending probably too much time away from my own family, helping other people and stuff like that. But, um, it, it was it turned into an opportunity and so i ended up leaving and then brandon martin over at martin legal group where mm -hmm. i'm at now he reached out and wanted me to come over there and so it's it, and it was a perfect fit because i get to work on deals and deal and deal flow which is really what i enjoy and do it in bitcoin and do oil and gas still so it's like a marriage of all yeah the that's I the love. best that's the best of both right, worlds right and so and then when you guys asked about doing the show i was like 
Hell yeah. Let's be perfect, man. So <laughs> I can talk about the shit I like to talk about and, and talk you, to my boys. And you like to talk. So. Yeah, I like to talk. <laughs> I, I, I feel like, yeah, I better shut up and get you all talking. So, because, what, yeah. Why what's are what's, we here? Yeah, I know. I know. My bad. My bad. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your background, Gideon? Um, I grew up um, seeing my dad love uh, the upstream oil and gas business. And really, my granddad was one of those American dream stories who, you know, in sixth grade, he had to, his dad passed away and he had to go to work um, and then, you know, became an entrepreneur. And, um, you know, and so my dad got to watch my granddad, um, you know, go from eating hot dogs to steaks. But one thing that happened, you know, my granddad didn't know anything about money. He didn't get to go to college. So he went bankrupt several times. And so, but my dad got to learn operations, grew up in the field and my dad ended up getting to go to college. Um, and so I just, I just watched my dad love the industry and I grew up, you know, I was going to Nape when I was 12, <laughs> um, and just, just loved it. And, um, so really after college, it was go do investment banking in Houston or go to Midland and figure something out. And yeah. so I want to get boots on the ground in Midland. My dad encouraged me to, to do that. And, um, so moved out to Midland, um, worked for, uh, Anthem oil and gas, a mineral acquisition company and got to learn the whole cold calling. I love <laughs> cold calling. Um, and then really the Permian was heating up. So we, um, <clears throat> I called my dad and I said, Hey, I think this whole Permian thing's real. I'll come back and let, let's get in on the Permian. So from 2012, uh, starting in 2012, you know, we like everyone just bought minerals, sold minerals, bought leases. We're still drilling. Um, my dad, we, we, he'd drill about 30 to 50 wells a year. Um, and then around 2016, we'd sold a pretty big deal. And I had a lot of friends in Silicon Valley that were telling me, um, Hey, Gideon, we like you. We really like your wife and we are investing in businesses <laughs> that are going to put your oil and gas company out of business. And I was like, man, I really appreciate that. None of my oil friends are, are telling me those things. And, and at the same time, I had a lot of, you know, there's a large community that want, you know, a lot of people, you know, okay, well, renewables are bad. And I, so I took some time off, um, in late 16 and 17 to really kind of do my own independent analysis and brought on an intern, uh, Jesse Pelton to help me frame up some, some for-profit investments that were carbon neutral. And through, and through that, we just saw how cheap power was in Texas. And so mm -hmm. we flipped from, okay, how do you invest in power re renewable generation, um, to how, what needs cheap power? Hmm. And, you know, um, I'd always liked crypto. I, I believe in, you know, a free market bottom up solutions. And so, yeah, we just, um, we plugged in some, some GPUs and all of a sudden it was like, man, there's a bunch of internet nerds plugging in these things. But <laughs> this is an operations game. Yeah. And so we just started buying GPUs around 17 and just maxing out credit cards and just leasing warehouses. And then towards the end of the summer, uh, Jesse said, Hey, I'll drop out of college if you'll, uh, you know, invest in a company and let's start a, a, you know, a crypto mining company. And at the time I was trying to work on a new philosophy. So I clearly had a lot of cool stuff going on. So I, uh, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's do this. So we started autonomous crypto and yeah, leasing warehouses, data centers. But what we kept seeing was data center people didn't speak our, uh, Bitcoin language. And so, um, we just, I mean, we had thousands of GPUs, high cost. And so we, we just, it didn't emerge overnight, but it was like, man, we need to build, we need to build a product, a campus for Bitcoin miners. So that was where this idea, um, you know, we're like, all right, where's the cheapest power? Okay. West Texas, tons of wind, tons of solar, tons of natural gas, and it's stranded. So we went out, um, I call, and then John Bick over priority was doing all our upstream oil and gas electrical work. And I kept trying to get him to buy like, Hey, where can I get power? And he'd send me sites in town. And there was all these little taxes or mm -hmm. regulations or something that was impediment. And finally he was like, well, why don't you just build your own substation? I was like, I can do that. <laughs> I was like, all right. So we, uh, and I'll never forget. Cause he was like, he was kind of annoyed. He was like, look, what, what are you looking for? What are you doing? I was like, all right, John, we're mining Bitcoin. And he goes, what the hell is that? And I, and I heard him clicking on his keyboard and he goes, holy shit, this thing's three gigawatts. <laughs> and I was like, I know, and it's going to grow. And so he's like, all right, well, you know, you build your own substation. So we ended up buying land out in West Texas, um, had to work with university lands. We bought the land. I signed the interconnection, gave a significantly large personal guarantee on the facilities extension agreement. 
and then called university lands. I was like, Hey, you know, I'm getting bought some land, need a right away. They were like, no, I was like, I hear you, but I'm, I'm going to, I'll see you in the morning. So I drove through the night, slept in my car, was at their office the next day and just said, Hey, look, Bitcoin miners, we're the modern day wildcatters. And so mm-hmm. y'all know what Santa Rita number one is. That was the first well in the permit unleashed billions of barrels helped, you know, win world war two. Like that's what we're trying to do. And this new y'all took the name digital wildcatter. So I couldn't get that one, <laughs> but these are the digital wildcatters and we're going to put this out here and then it's going to attract more Bitcoin miners. And then we're going to do demand response. It's going to balance the grid. We're going to incentivize more low cost power. And then the data centers are going to come. Then industrial manufacturing is going to like, this isn't just, we're building a Bitcoin mine. This is, we're going to help unleash human prosperity through more uh, energy. And this is going to be an energy revolution. And what side of history do you want to be on? And they were like, okay, that is uh yeah. They got me fired up. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, so we built Hoddle ranch one, it was a hundred megawatt uh, spec substation that was meant for one thing and one thing only. And that was to mine Bitcoin. Uh, and then we ended up traveling the world, telling everyone about ERCOT demand response flew like 19 different groups from around the world out to West Texas. And they were like, what, you know, the Chinese, some Russians, the South Koreans, Brazilians, family offices, Canadians. And, um, yeah, they were all like, this is exactly what I want, but none of them had cash and uh, a group showed up and, um, they said we want it. And so we sold it to them and, um, then we'd already planned, all right, well, hundred megawatts is cute. Let's go bigger. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, I've, I've kind of bounced similar ebb and flow between upstream oil and gas. I think the principles of upstream and the capabilities are, are critical. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I see these worlds of capabilities mm-hmm. converging. So anyway, that's, that's a little bit long winded story. No, it's me. good, man. It's good. <laughs> it was, we'll go back to it, but, um, there's a story in Texas monthly about his family that I read the other day and it's incredible, man. And it, when you read that about his dad and his grandpa, it makes you understand kind of where he's going. Like the Bitcoin wildcat attitude is definitely ingrained yeah. in his family. So I it's, love uh, I'd encourage everybody to go read that article. We, yeah, I want to, you can put it on the website. Yeah, we, yeah, we can yeah. put a link in the show notes yeah. for that. Yeah, we can find it, it over. Was, it was great. It was well written. I don't know who wrote it, but it was entertaining read too. That Griff, you were fourth generation, right? Like fifth, aren't you? Fifth generation? A Texan? A yeah. uh, seventh. Oh, seven generations. Seven generations Texan. Yeah. Oh, gee. We, uh, came over from like Port Lavaca to uh, Castroville back in the 1840s. And uh, there was there was two Havy brothers. Uh, one got sick and went to uh, San Antonio and ended up staying there. And then uh, the unintelligent side decided to ranch on rocks. <laughs> so that's, that's where we come from. So give everybody a quick rundown on your background. All right. So I, uh, I grew up in Hood County, right on top of the Barnett Shale. My dad was a nuclear engineer, so uh, energy density always made sense to me. I uh, studied energy commerce at uh, Tech and then went to Anadarko as well. Uh, they you meet in Anadarko or? No, no, we didn't. Okay. Yeah, he was before me. But I was, I was, Jared was there when I was Jared, there. Jared, yeah. And so, <laughs> He's the connection. Okay. Yeah. They, they made the mistake of putting me out in the field. And <laughs> I absolutely loved the field, the courthouses, the, you know, small town, uh, greasy spoons for lunch. You're slinging books. You're talking to landowners, you know, chewing the fat over, over coffee and cattle is, uh, it's just a passion of mine, I guess. <laughs> and so I, uh, Ended up not being very good at big oil and uh, went back to school, did ranch management uh, at TCU, and then went straight to the field. This was 2008. There's a little play called Marcellus. I thought, hey, that's like a ton of gas sitting in the market's backyard. I can go, you know, plant my stake here and print money, right? Well, turns out pipelines, you know, had a lot to do with that, but... uh, (laughs) The, yeah, the, I guess kind of that first bust, you know, 2009, uh, I was like one of the last men standing when I should have just found a job immediately, but it worked <laughs> out. Uh, I got a job, uh, like a cowboy uh, job in the outback of Australia. And then I was like a working holiday visa or whatever. So I, then I get a call from one of the, the guys that we hung out in Pittsburgh because it was just all Texas expats just living in Pittsburgh yeah. and yeah. was in Marcellus, Texas. Right. Yeah. And so anyway, we all kept in touch and then he calls me and he's like, get to Ohio right now. I'm in like, can Karen's Australia. And I was like, is, is there an override involved? Okay, let's go. So I, <laughs> uh, take a, take a, take a flight back and we start leasing up, uh, what was called the Utica, uh, that 
it was, you know, kind of cheaper back then. So we put together leases and, and flipped those and uh, put together leases and kind of just started chasing shale plays uh, all around. Uh, what, what year was this? This would, this would have been from 2010 to uh, probably... That's like before Chesapeake even came in then, huh? 2013. Oh, yeah. Probably. Yeah, no, yeah, we you were, guys were early. You can, you can find yeah. us. Damn. Paying some pretty good rates in those yeah. courthouses. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, kind of from there. Uh, and now, yeah, it's it, it's since it's obviously blown up and you mm. can't get very good rates out there. But from, oh, from there, we went to, uh, I want to say it was like Klein Shale, right? Took an L there. But uh, it was two weeks before I was moving to Argentina to go run pipeline rideways for uh, Repsol back in the Vaca Muerta shale days. Mm -hmm. But I met a girl uh, and didn't stay in Argentina long. And now we got four kids and uh, <laughs> they're walking in right now. <laughs> <laughs> make, a little, make a little guest appearance. Yeah, we brought our family kids. show. Family yeah. show. And uh, anyway, came back and... She wanted me to stay in Houston, um, obviously stay out of the courthouses and, and be around. So I got a job with a Bakken operator, um, Oasis, and, you know, kind of started going kind of back to the corporate side. And then that would have been 2015 when we know what happened then. So at $70 oil, they kicked all the, you know, contractors to the curb. Mm -hmm. And it was, that you know, kind of that time in my life, like, what do I do here? Uh, I've... I was engaged. I was about to be married, and uh, I had I had no job. You know, really looking looking Great bleak. Yeah. yeah, and luckily my uh, my wife's uh, dad is an entrepreneur, and so she was a hundred percent supportive of go do your own thing. Mm -hmm. So me and uh, Peyton McKinney started Mountain Lion Oil and Gas, which we we started you know buying minerals in uh, like East Texas Cotton Valley, which I still love and would do oh, today. Yeah. But it's I've got stomping grounds there. I've got no market, and there was not enough you know cash flow initially for me to fund any sort of GNA and a mm. company. So we had to flip. We had to sell them, and so everybody was in the Permian, right? Mm. Nobody cared about my East Texas assets. Yeah, yeah. There was like Scoop Stack was okay, but everyone was just I want Permian. So we went, started buying Midland Basin, got lucky on some trades there. And then decided to put every penny we had, uh, and I mean every penny we had, into a top lease uh, eight months early and just kind of pickle the beast, right? And, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of sleepless nights, very puckered up, uh, got, a, got a good good butt workout from that yeah. deal. But uh, <laughs> next thing you know, uh, we, we had a guy with a lawn chair out there at midnight seeing if that rig came in, and it didn't. So we... We got very lucky, uh, you know, made a, made a bet there and it's just good old fashioned American dream like mm -hmm. that. You can only do that in the oil field, right? I got a top lease story. Those are the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, roll the dice, man. Oh, total, total dice roll. <laughs> so we then take uh, that money and finally can start hiring people and moved up to New Mexico and started buying these uh, federal overrides, which has it's been a great game because there's just no data up there. And it's probably one to 200, you know, of how many mineral buyers are on the state line south if you're trying to buy in texas compared to new mexico and so once we had uh kind of a foothold there you know we hired some more people and uh because if if you don't have data you're starting with you know the private equity guys with mm. half a billion dollars and you with a couple nickels you know start the same starting line and that's all you can ask for you know in my shoes is if you're telling me the gold is here and all i have to do is grind to get there that's my kind of opportunity set so uh, we we kind of got lucky on some divestments in like 19, like December 19. So then we built this algorithm that uh, kind of opportunistically bought uh, Texas royalties. And when you say we built an algorithm, <laughs> that was uh, we we have a, we have a smart smart Python uh, coder out of, out of Austin. <laughs> All I did was sit there and uh, this would be a really good idea if somebody could build this algorithm. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah no, absolutely. We just we kind of sat down because at first like um, it was just a lot of yes nos and we have to really tighten it up. But he has no idea the language I'm speaking. Yeah, I have no clue what language he's speaking. And so finally, you know, you kind of get after two years, it finally started mm -hmm. popping off uh, in 2020. And so we, you know, kind of had powder and we're, and we're just buying uh, anything. Perfect and, time to. Yeah, yeah, these aren't like, uh, you know, huge, huge deals at a time. Mm -hmm. But the 
the the motto is a sea full of nickels uh, that you you know wake up one day you got a hundred page probate of all these little things but the mailbox money yep. is just kind of yep. coming in and then uh, I'm in Lubbock for a football game in 2020 uh, November and I run to my buddy uh, Connor Murphy and I'm what are you up to what are you up to and then you know we kind of go half half kimono I got an algorithm he's like I'm mining Bitcoin off natural gas I was like. <laughs> Four margaritas. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's just let's just go ahead and get this on. Uh, what the heck did you just tell me? And uh, once he kind of ran through the numbers, uh, he had a stranded gas well that it had high nitrogen content. He's 19 miles away from a pipeline. They're uh, banging out prospects of like chasing you know reefs in Central Texas, and thought it was going to be liquids and could truck them out. But all of a sudden, they're stuck with this uh, straight dry gas, um, no markets. And had to get creative with solutions. And so Connor calls uh, Steve Barber. Steve Barber. Out of Canada. He comes down, uh, sets them up a Bitcoin mine. And next thing you know, he's making more money off this stranded high nitrogen content well than if he had, uh, you know, Henry Hub type markets. So once you see those uh, numbers, you cannot unsee it. Right. And so we, I was like immediately, what do you need? He was running a bunch of S9s, which is... Um, you know, kind of like a Pinto uh, terahash, you know, machine compared to like the Ferraris that were available. And he's like, I need Ferraris. So uh, we did like a little friends and family raise um, and got uh, some M30S pluses. Uh, to, and we just thought, hey, we can walk in there and just plug them in, right? Pat ourselves on the back, <laughs> we're Bitcoin miners. And uh, that was not the case, right? It was, uh, it, was, it was a lot of drama, a lot of bumps, bruises and scars uh, to finally get that thing up and running. But luckily, once we started running is when the uh, the Chegs at uh, Chinese mm. kicked all the miners out and, you know, difficulty plummeted. And so all of a sudden we go from like literally like half a Bitcoin to four Bitcoin a month was just, you know, this is a good idea. Let's <laughs> let's let's keep this up. Then we had all these, um, you know, guys looking for space. And like like Gideon said, you look around for power in the world and all roads leads to Texas mm -hmm. and especially West Texas at that time, just underutilized wind and solar that um, were begging for a market, begging for market. So we went, we found like a 36 megawatt spot that then got a 300 megawatt permit. We had the Waha uh, pipeline running through it. So knew that, you know, we, we can maybe even put, put a uh, nat gas generation out there. There's plenty of land as everybody knows, uh, you know, for solar. And so, you know, at the end of the day, that could be like a 600 megawatt site, but it's, it's a lot of building to get there. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. And then from there, um, we were able to exit that. And, you know, the team kind of looked around and some people wanted to do this. Some people wanted to do that. So it was kind of like a perfect time to, you know, start running. Because if you're in the oil and gas business, you know what a boom and bust cycle looks like, right? And so, like a lot of the Bitcoin people are just freaking out when it when it busts. But the, the new yeah, the new the Bitcoin, new Bitcoin yeah. people, yeah. But the every oil and gas guy is just looking at chops. Like, right, okay, this right. is <laughs> we just saw a double eagle drill at twenty dollar yeah. oil, and those flowing barrels are now just right. making the licks, right? And everybody's trying to you know ape in at a hundred dollar oil has the highest service cost <laughs> yeah. and drilling cost possible. So we're sitting there looking like this is some cheap ASICs. So we started up mountain line mining, and we're doing. Basically, like it's a on grid, off grid kind of combo, and just trying to get our hands on as many chips and ASICs as we possibly can right now. Because, in my opinion, this next bull run, when it happens, uh, the network size has grown so much; mm -hmm. it's gotten, you know, bigger and and older and wiser, mm -hmm. and you're not that as weird being a Bitcoin right, miner to right. where you got more credibility. And then that next one, I think, is going to be so hard to get your hands on ASICs that mm -hmm. uh, any semiconductors that you're sitting on uh, here in the next two years are just going to to gain in value. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that um, this is the last downturn where it's like you're not because I, I can tell you all the people are calling me now to get into the space that are looking are smart money guys with backgrounds in like power markets and like they they i think they're seeing the opportunity that like this industry is real now what even 2020 when we first got going it was not real like <laughs> it, it, nobody digital you were one of the babies only people, yes yeah you're one of the only people that i know of that were doing like large-scale bitcoin mines for bitcoin mining 
Um, he was the in the States. One. Yeah. Like you honestly, <laughs> you're like the pioneer, man. You're the pi- You and Steve Barber are two of the pioneers for like getting ahead of something and like establishing that this is a, a, a legit real op- business opportunity. And yeah. And both of you guys are oil and gas guys. So it's like, you know, it fits. And that, that's the part that I still, I spend a ton of my time working on with companies, oil and gas companies. I'm just literally trying to educate them to <clears throat> mining and showing them kind of how to model it. And basically just getting them to realize that this is your same business that you've been doing for the last forever. You know, this is exactly the same thing. It's just a digital widget. It's just a, di- yeah, it's the same And a thing hell, though. just so much fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. And honestly, like all the people I've met, this is the thing that's been the best for me is like meeting you guys, you guys even. Like I, I wouldn't have met most of the people that are big in my life right now if it wasn't for like Bitcoin mining. And the crazy thing is they're all from the same background that I was from already. So <laughs> it, it it's weird, but um, I I really think that the experiences like you guys are just talking about are what makes us perfect for uh, this industry. And actually, fellow layman, I think laymen in particular are primed for like moving into this space. You're the most land man, non land man person I know. So, oh, he's a land man. Yeah, I, I did yeah. a I did a stint in Stonewall County. All right, right. Well, there, over that in makes Jayden, sense then. Land running is, title one summer. Land is the basis of all energy. Yeah, yeah. completely. And that's where even right now we talk about, it's like, look, I mean, we've bought a lot of land in Mm -hmm. West Texas Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's kind of like buying minerals in Midland County in 2001, a little early, (laughs) (laughs) a lot of early, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like, this is all, it all starts with Uh land. Then you need interconnection. Then you need high voltage uh, Mm -hmm. transformers and all that takes years of time. So you got to have the land. Well, where do you guys, and and I know we don't have a ton of time, but where, where do you guys think the best opportunities for oil and gas companies are like i've heard people diff- talk about you know oil and gas companies getting taken over by bitcoin miners that's never going to happen in my opinion i just i think the technical uh level of of uh the disciplines required uh, the operational issues uh oil and gas is tremendously more difficult and complex than than bitcoin mining it doesn't mean it's not complex no, I, I'm, but, I'm telling you the the technical acumen of guys that are drilling, you know, deep water Gulf mm. of Mexico, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. five thousand foot before you hit the seabed type wells. Right. Uh, <laughs> this is child's play. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. You got, you know, yeah. you got some of the baddest minds in the country, especially when you get high energy prices. Uh, you're gravitating more talent, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to the industry, and it is a heck of a lot easier to learn Bitcoin than the, oh, yeah. the oil and gas business. Yeah. But I kind of look at it as it's it's their new tool. It's mm-hmm. their new arrow in their quiver that they now have this option to where they'll never see like a gas bust ever again. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. they don't have, if they don't like the market uh, for their natural gas, then they now right. have an option to mine it and store it, right? Like you never yeah. had real gas storage uh, solutions. And, and I think that's a lot of what oil and gas guys understand about the Bitcoin is where you can basically take that gas instead of being forced to put it in a pipeline, you can mm-hmm. put it in your pocket and wait till, you know, favorable market right. conditions. Right. Uh, yeah, I agree completely. I think that even just allocating a portion of the reserves to it is it's like a, an easy hedge without actually having to hedge. And um, I think that it's inevitable before they all start kind of falling and realizing that this is this is an avenue that we could all take. But and you run your own oil and gas company, Troy Petroleum. So um, is Troya doing any of the off grid or are you, you kind of focusing still on grid or behind the meter type? Yeah, we're uh Choya's strategy and we we you know oil still absolutely pays for the mm-hmm. bills, but we really think of Choya as a venture capital company that operates. So we are industry agnostic. Mm-hmm. We like really abstract concepts. So we try to buy PDP, that's very challenging. Yeah. But we, you know, we love wildcatting. We mm. love Bitcoin mining. And so what are these concepts that are difficult to where it's a corporate, our CFO is always stressed because it's very hard to model <laughs> oh, these yeah. things. Like, give me a type curve. It's like, yeah. well, we haven't even drilled the well yet. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll give you one. But, yeah. you know, and it's the same thing with the Bitcoin mining difficulty. Mm. It's like, all right, let's look at returns. It's like you have Bitcoin doubling, you know, at the happening. It's like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Bitcoin's going to moon. It has NGU technology. I don't know how you model that but yeah so we we're very right now we're running ac- active upstream we're going to keep drilling and i love having you know we're not looking to be the biggest tomorrow we're really focused on one survive and two be dynamic and mm-hmm. so we don't take on debt 
and we really don't try to rush things. I mean, a lot of Bitcoiners want to rush. You know, when the China ban happened, it was a call right. day. I need a gigawatt today. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, cool, get in line. Um, <laughs> so really, we're, we're continuing our upstream oil and gas um, operations. And then we're in the very early innings of building out what we're calling Choya Energy. Um, and it's exclusively grid, ERCOT, Texas based. Mm. And not only how do we grow our company's MPV, but really grids globally are stressed. And there's really very little hope within power industries for grids globally. And you've got manufacturing shutting down around the world. And so everyone is going to look to ERCOT. Every, all eyes are on Texas on how do we fix these grids that have, have aging thermal generation but at the same time, increase renewable intermittent penetration. Mm. And so really there are, the only solutions are, you know, raise the cost, invest in, you know, capacity markets and raise the cost for end consumers. And so we're exclusively focused on how do we tweak regulations that allow for more bottom up solutions and really Bitcoin mining. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the, someone said it last week at Gulf Coast Power Association, this is the apex load. I mean, we can respond to events in the grid within seconds. And you just, so that really changes. So that's what Choi is doing. We're very, we're in the early innings of, you know, how do we grow in the Bitcoin mining space, but then also policy wise, how mm -hmm. do we be a good partner, not only to the community, but also to the ERCOT stakeholder system? Yeah. That this is why you guys are such good advocates for this year, this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And Griffin too, you've been doing a lot of policy work on stuff in Texas in yeah. particular, right? Yeah. So. We're actually uh, going through the state leads right now, trying to get a bill passed that, uh, instead of flaring, um, basically removing any um, severance taxes to where we're encouraging Bitcoin mm -hmm. mining. Mm -hmm. And like at the end of the day, I'm not saying that every single, you know, Bitcoin miners either make or break a deal on the taxes. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it sends the signal to the rest of the world that we have a free market capitalism solution right. to a problem that I don't care if you think the problem is wasting money or uh, there's too much methane in the atmosphere. You actually have a solution that you don't have to regulate anybody, but you can incentivize people. And that's kind of where, uh, you know, Texas kind of leads the way mm -hmm. and, hey, we don't have to regulate if we can incentivize. And so hopefully uh, this this next ledge, call your state reps, um, and hopefully we get this basically uh, through through this next legislative session. And I think that's what's that's so great. It's, point, it's yeah. mutually beneficial. Right. So, Absolutely. so everything we look to do is mutually beneficial. Yeah. Like I have no public opinion on CO2 or mm -hmm. methane or all that, but people seem to be really, con people are concerned about it. So it's like, all right, here's an incentive to right. lower it. And that also helps the Bitcoin miners, helps the stakeholders, helps the community, helps everybody. So it, that That is exactly how I feel about all so much stuff that's going on is that we don't have just because you might have a different reason for doing something if the end result is beneficial for both oh my bad okay if the end result is beneficial for both then what is the problem there you know isn't I mean? one it should be it, just because yes bitcoin uses power a lot of it is power that is stranded power and isn't going to make it to a market anyway right um there's sh this whole concept about talking about how much energy it uses is ridiculous in my opinion um, but regardless, why does it keep getting talked about? Like, why is there I don't so know. much foot and, out there? And it's, I think that's one thing that I'm very comfortable with it. The clearest cor correlation to human prosperity is energy consumption. So we need right, to, right. so energy efficiency matters, but straight up lowering the amount of power we all consume is nothing I'm interested in speaking about. I want to absolutely <laughs> maximize how much power every individual globally consumes. And then at the same time, we can think about maximizing that, but lowering emissions, but you know, human prosperity, women's rights, all these things literally correlate to how much energy, how affordable and reliable. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at most of Africa, a lot of Latin America, they're not energized. And mm -hmm. that leads to problems in society. Yep. And so Bitcoin mining is the most beautiful example of we're going to use more power and it's going to benefit everybody, no right. matter what tribe you think you're in. Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah, man. That's the Cheap thing. Cheap energy about. is human flourishing. Yes, yes completely. And um, it, Bitcoin should not be a political issue, um, in my opinion. It should be something that uh, I don't think it is. I mean, I have yeah. so many friends that like, look, you like renewable power, Bitcoin like Bitcoin's absolutely for it. that. Look, you like well, you know natural gas, Bitcoin needs that mm -hmm. too. You know, oh, you want to build more transmission in West Texas? Bitcoin helps that. It's like, well, and it's a key to so much innovation because you're you, you can monetize an experiment. 
right? You can monetize something early on where you don't have an end consumer. Like Bitcoin is your end consumer. One hundred percent, Bitcoin mining democratized energy innovation. We oh, have, if you wanted to innovate in the power sector, you need billions of dollars and work at some massive corporation where you probably mm -hmm. weren't going to get anything done. And so, what Bitcoin mining did was similar to the App Store. You know, everyone software was monopolized, or there was some mm -hmm. olig oligopoly corporations who really innovated there but then the, the app store came along and that was a clear line of sight to revenue for anybody who could rub five nickels in code bitcoin mining was the signal to the market of here if you can innovate in the power sector i don't care if you're a nigerian i don't care if you're a west texas redneck i don't <laughs> care if you're a canadian anywhere yeah. you've got some crazy ocean idea you need no one's permission go out and innovate and those innovations are just getting warmed. Even the ideas we were looking at five years ago that we pivoted from, they're engineering successes, but they weren't economic successes. Right. It was like, hey, this project's megawatt is not profitable, but if you built it at a gigawatt, it would be profitable. Mm -hmm. But like, who needs a gigawatt? It's like Bitcoiners. Yeah. Right. And then just like, you know, we saw with Tesla or any other new product, you start with the wealthy end consumers who can have a higher amount of capital they can allocate. And then once you iron out the kinks and get it, it gets to, you know, to where you crank out. So start with the expensive Teslas. You start with phones used to be big. Now everybody has them. So really energy is the same thing. We've got energy technologies that are engineering successes, but we need to build them bigger. So economy is a scale. Bitcoin makes them way bigger. And it's like, don't just build one gigawatt new type of energy, build 10. And yeah. so then we're just building out these supply chains. So this is going to play out for mm -hmm. the rest do you, you know, think centuries. do you think satoshi had the foresight to understand the implications of that of all the energy innovation that we would see i think how uh, how Fenny did yeah yeah and, and i do i do think that that is part of it part like i i think that the design was this is going to fuel innovation and energy is obviously because of proof of work a huge part of that and so um yeah i, I do think that and, that was part of the of the original plan. And it's the one thing you can't counterfeit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's true. Yeah, totally. You can't, can't print energy. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it destroys the LARPers and the grifters <laughs> like from day one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's why they hate it. And yeah. it's really, you know, yeah. he, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> he was the Satoshi, he or she was the founder of effectively the Bitcoin network is a venture capital company. And it's, it's a democratized energy venture capital company that allocates capital. If you lower the price of power, you get a higher allocation of capital. So it's the most savage and beautiful form of venture capital towards like, if you perform, you need no one's permission, but you're getting more capital. And then the highest capital. It's so amazing. It is, it is, it is the it is. most beautiful and, thing ever. And, and it's these iterative processes that yeah. are occurring. And we're still in the first inning. Like you said, early mm -hmm. innings, I think we're still in the first inning, yeah. right? Because when you look at the history of the Bitcoin, you know, network, you needed like uh, maybe a megawatt in the early days, like $10, yeah. $15 Bitcoin. And then all of a sudden you need a handful of megawatts to really chase the price. And then everybody's trying to chase that price. They're plugging in, getting ASICs. And now, oh, we're up to 30 megawatts, right? And then, you know, once it passes a thousand bucks, then all of a sudden we're having to start going to gigawatts. And now we're just trying to chase the $50,000 price. Uh, that's, you know, kind of where we are right now, like probably eight, 10 gigawatts, right? But when we go on this next one, like we're talking maybe 30 gigawatts of power. And that's mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's like half of Texas right there. <laughs> like the whole data center um, market cap is not is yeah. not 30 gigawatts yet. So sure, let's just plug that in, right? No, you have to innovate. Mm -hmm. You have to get creative. You have to plan for decades in, in advance, right? Tying up land, building substations. Uh, getting your hands on, you know, every sort of infrastructure you can get your hands on. Well, then let's talk about where those chips going to come from, right? 30 gigawatts worth of chips is a lot of chips. You only have really, uh, you know, an Asian manufacturing hub and until, um, I guess, Intel and, you know, Texas really gets on board with, with manufacturing there. Uh, you're going to have a lag and the guys that are investing now and building now, you know, during these down cycles, which, I get it. You, it's getting access to capital right now is a lot harder than the bull runs. Everybody's you know trying to throw you money then, but the smart money is, is literally saying, "I see where this is going." And if if you can wrap your head around what thirty gigawatts right. looks like this time, and then what does it look like in ten years? No matter what you build today, will be like gobbled up, you know, at some point. And then I believe you're just going to kind of see a, a an M and A, just like the oil and gas companies yeah. kind of do, um, to where. 
everybody's basically consolidating growing right, yeah right. growing growing through acquisitions it's the only way because you you can't build that infrastructure fast enough for some of these no, larger groups it's, to grow. it's the wildcats but, right, if you're listening right. right now now's the time to go be a wildcat and build if you if you build right now it is there's it's very very right. hard not to make, make yes, a ton of money in is. the future on but uh, it's, honestly, it takes it takes guts it takes risk and it takes capital which is is very hard to come by right now yes it is and griffin's group that he mentioned you mentioned your project you guys are working on but um i've had the privilege of getting to see some of it uh, you know kind of very close up uh they're a client of ours, as is Gideon's group. So yeah, I like, got two my, my two yeah, favorite Mar clients. Martin right? Legal, as are we. Yeah, you are too. Martin oh Legal's God. been, you know, I mean, Martin Legal's been in. I mean, he Brandon specifically has yes. been doing oil and gas, Bitcoin mining, legal work in Texas since twenty seventeen, long, longer than anybody. Right. I mean, right. he was my right. first call, and I was like. University of Lance just said no. <laughs> and I bet everything I have. <laughs> How does this work? What do I do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, and th that's true. And so, I mean, and this is a little plug for the firm, but obviously we feel like we're probably the the uh, most experienced Bitcoin mining firm there is, and obviously uh, heavy oil and gas as well. But, but Griffin's project, that's what they're doing, is they're putting money into infrastructure right now and getting, playing them, timing the market correctly and i do think that goes to just the experience you've had with uh, oil and gas and just knowing the cycles that we go through so um and with you know with that in mind as well like where do you do you see are you at least when you're you know trying to raise money for your different stuff are you finding that the most uh money that is interested is from the energy space or are you no, kind of absolutely not really? no we, right. we almost like have to have uh, Bitcoin appetite, or at least kind of yeah. a knowledge base, or just the energy guys, it's their way to get some exposure, right? right? They're not going to go buy the coin. Mm -hmm. They don't really understand that. But they're like, okay, I can get this Bitcoin yeah. goes to zero, I'm still sitting on a bunch of semiconductors, I can put a number on that, right. Yeah. And so I kind of look at it right now as, as you're seeing uh, machine prices get cheaper, but energy is more expensive. Yet, the, <laughs> the, yeah. The difficulty uh, hash ain't is slowing down. Going yeah, is, is going up and up and up. And uh, our CFO, Mike, uh, looks at it like this is just uh, the shale game, right? Yeah, when, totally. when everybody was kicking that debt yeah. can down the road yeah. and just drilling these wells that maybe they could spend a dollar and return Keep the debt, cents, the EBITDA yeah. covenants in line. Yes, <laughs> and, just, and just pray for another commodity rip, right? And yeah. so all these guys are plugging in because they don't have a choice right now. They took on some you know, expensive capital. They bought a ton of miners at a very expensive price, and they don't really have the choice to, yeah. um, you know, unplug. Like it said, and yeah. so what I love about the efficiency of of the Bitcoin uh, network with the difficulty, and if if you're a high cost operator, you're getting unplugged, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting bankrupt. You're basically uh, everybody in you know 2020, 2021. If you had a lot of debt, you probably didn't make it through. If you um, you know bought uh, <laughs> A, a PUD deal at hundred dollar oil, you probably didn't make it through. Right. And so it's the tide going out right now and you see who's swimming naked. And basically the, I, I kind of see the M and a happening now, but it was, it was just when, if this, if say the price goes down to 15 K or, or 10 K, mm -hmm. oh uh, yeah. the destruction will be, I mean, massive, but it's a buying opportunity if you if you can get your hands on that capital, which I'm I'm not claiming that to be easy. No, it's not easy. And I, I I think even if we don't see a price drop because of the difficulty increase, we're gonna get we're gonna see a lot of uh M A and bankruptcy. So yeah. Um it's inevitable. But the uh yeah, Great the, time for the oil and gas guys to really take a right, look at it right now. Right. They've they've, we, they've got a lot of cash because it is high capex, yeah. don't get me wrong. But if you're sitting on cash right now, it is a beautiful time to start experimenting. Uh, oh, with, we're, we're at like 10% of the cost of what miners were at you yeah. know, oh, a year yeah. ago or less. A five for one deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, there couldn't be a better time to get in it. Um, but understanding kind of how the modeling works and now the profitability. And again, I know we don't have a ton of time, but when you guys look at it, like having the oil and gas experience, how would you kind of tell people to, model it and how to look at it like where's the decline curve come in play how what are the correlations between the financial or the economic aspects of bitcoin mining and how do they relate to to uh, oil and gas 
evaluations on a project. Yeah. I mean, your price of power is effectively mm -hmm. your LOE. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're, we never, I never look to do anything in Bitcoin or oil and gas where it's like, look, we're going to get in and we have to sell this deal. So everything we're doing is a little bit slower, but it's, we're going to, you know, hold on to these assets forever. So really, you know, it's your LOE, it's your price of power, and then your flexibility on power. You know, people that have PPAs are great right now mm -hmm. that signed them a while back, but if you don't, it's going to be harder. There's going to be credit. Um, and so, you know, hedging in the oil and gas business, there's, there is some Bitcoin hedging products, but I think that's more akin to like your PPA. Can you get right. that locked down? Um, and then you yeah, have difficulty. How do you model difficulty? Um, it's really challenging. You can. Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. can. You've just, and that's why I think <laughs> that's I, your decline curve, though. Exactly. Right? And yeah. a lot of people are like, look, I want to have get my money back really fast. That certainly matters. Um, but I think that's you have to have a confluence of um, KPIs to mm -hmm. think about how fast you get your money back. But the most important is how low. What is your marginal cost to produce a Bitcoin relative to everyone mm -hmm. else? Which is a exactly the same thing as what your price to produce a barrel exactly. right that's just, that's the correlation that's what made me get into it. it was like this is the freaking same thing this is the same thing yeah we got a good audience today yeah. <laughs> I, it's awesome I, I i compare it to like trying to explain proof of work to the oil and gas mm -hmm. uh industry proof of work in uh in oil and gas is obviously you need you know a geology prospect, a landman to go get it, the permitting process, then the engineers get out of the ground. I read the Texas Monthly article. We don't need geologists. That's, <laughs> his grandpa figured that out. We don't need your grandpa and your dad. Right? I think uh, you do need geologists. That, that's actually been really funny. We're in a play um, over not in the Permian, east of the Permian, and a bunch of the landmen. Look, in the Permian, a lot of guys, especially as, like, you know, with land backgrounds, you just like, look, you bought stuff. We all got lucky. Just flip, flip, flip. flip. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, these next plays, especially in the oil and yeah, gas business, gonna need geologists you got it. That's yeah. what's been fun, though. It's been humbling. Yeah. It's like all the geologists are like, and you need the old school geologists that right. like have actually read a log. could actually yeah. read a log. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> geologists. I love you guys. You're all good. So, go <laughs> yeah. ahead. My bad. Those, yeah, are, my right, those are my right brain friends. Like, we're all creatives. <laughs> Shout out to the rock lickers. Out there. <laughs> the uh, yeah. So and then I, I think about it as like you have a pump jack. You need you need a how do you make a barrel of oil? You need a pump jack. You need time and you need energy, electricity, right, to run that pump jack. Then how do you make a Bitcoin? You need an ASIC, you know, a, a mining machine, uh, time and energy, electricity, right? So they can kind of see that part. And then I look at the hash rate as a flowing barrel mm. to where when the there's too much flowing barrels out there you know price is down and if there's too much hash rate out there uh the difficulty just basically regulates itself to where you just have these free markets that worldwide oil wti brand like you can take advantage of a market for, on a very short term but long term fundamentals are always mm -hmm. always going to win and you, i think that's going to be the exact same thing in right Bitcoin. so it's just boom, bust, boom, bust. We're gonna Man. we're gonna over drill when the price is high. We're gonna <laughs> see. That's I, I literally we were talking about that on the Sit way. Sit on our hands here. when it's low, right? You know? Is that and that's something again why I think we're best suited for this industry is because we understand that. I've had I've heard other people, um, even kind of in this industry, talk about like this. You know, after this next cycle, there won't be any more volatility. And it's like, yeah, they're... I, I they're, love our kids. I do too. They're great, man. In fact, we need to tell you what your daughter said on the way over here. She, I asked her, like, what she likes to do. She said, ah, I like to dig for Bitcoin. And I was like, oh, man, this Gideon has got her trained up. That's good. I'm teaching uh, her uh, perseverance by burying little treasures in the background <laughs> and, and then like fake burying stuff. So she she keeps getting dry holes. But I'm like, what do we do? Never you give try up again. You try, yeah. try again. Yeah. My dad right. always told me the story. You know, it's just you, you, what happens when you drill a dry hole. You pick up a shovel and you dig another one. Well. That's right. That's so. right, man. You got to keep going. Never give up. Um, but yeah, the uh, the profitability is always going to boom and bust. And I think out of this, though, with all the public miners and kind of the visible downturn, we're going to see a lot of kind of financial derivatives start popping up that are more established and in institutional type uh, groups so that it kind of will allow the institutional money to start coming into it. I think that a way to hedge and a way to uh, protect yourself from downside volatility, it's why oil and gas companies hedge, mm -hmm. but a way to protect yourself from that and the tax clarity, those two things are gonna, I think, in my opinion, allow the institutional money that's kind of evaluating things still to come pouring into the industry, which I, 
it's a matter of time before it does. And once people understand it more, I think that's what's going to happen. And, and I know we're all, all of us are probably on the same page, but you know, I think I want everybody that does listen, which maybe it might be two people right now, but um, <laughs> thanks when, mom. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my wife might even listen to this. Uh, but uh, like the bottom line is the similarities between them. Are, and I've said this at many meetups and all the different stuff, but instead of an a, instead of a wellbore, you got an ASIC computer that produces Instead of hydrocarbons producing terra hash that you then sell for Bitcoin, it's the same thing as a well bore producing hydrocarbons that you sell for USD. Yep. It's virtually the same thing. And um, you know, if 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 that's all people take from this from the oil and gas space, that'd be great. But um, I think that you guys and what what you do, you guys are perfect advocates for for the industry and for you know everything that uh, we need. We need the industry, the oil and gas industry, to understand that we have professionals that are thoughtful innovators, understand economics and understand how to like pick your timing, right? Like you've talked about that is like, you get in at the wrong time in this industry, you're gonna get freaking killed. Anybody and we, can make money at $120. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We bought our wells at 50 and we're like, it couldn't go lower. Than yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And then we're it good. did and we lost everything. So uh, low cost operators, yeah. you're gonna win in both businesses every time. Every time. Yeah, and every I think time. just having a good teams, I mean, really experience, cross industry experience, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely experience plugging in ASICs. That was my favorite thing, you know. You know, after we, you know, sold HODL, had a lot of people like, hey, heard you're in Bitcoin. You know, here's my financial model. What do you think? <laughs> I want to get into Bitcoin mining. It's like, have you ever plugged in an ASIC? <laughs> no. I was like, uh, all right, look, I'm, you go plug in an ASIC or a GPU. I don't care. Go plug it in, even in your apartment. Mm -hmm. And then then give me a shout. But it, like, the, you know, you put all the, these spreadsheet orders. Mm -hmm. And that's what another problem is. A lot of the capital that has come in is looking at how do you okay, let's keep things as cheap as possible. This is a new industry. We want to get our money back as fast as possible. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Well, then you've got machine degradation because you're not investing mm -hmm. in your facilities. So there is just all these principles, you know, and that's like, you know. A refrack. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, or having a bad yeah. directional company who, you know, <laughs> yeah. then your LOE is way higher. Mm -hmm. But sure, you got your money back or you over drill the thing. So yeah, the, the correlations are unbelievable. And that's what's really, I was sitting in our uh, rig line meeting the other day, I was telling you and um, one, it was just fun because I didn't ever, you know, I grew up, you know, just run around West Texas doing deals and be like, Dad, let's do this deal. And then we'd fight and then sometimes we did it, sometimes we didn't. <laughs> um, but just sitting in the rig line meeting, seeing the sophistication that Choi has been bringing to the upstream side and then, you know, planning stuff out really far into the future, being thoughtful, having every single, you know, you got regulatory, engineering, ops, geology, land, I mean, finance, everyone weighing in on the rig line meeting. And looking at that, I mean, it gives me, I mean, I got goosebumps right now thinking about just, <laughs> hey, look, I'm still waiting for, you know, Joe Biden to call me and say, hey, thanks for drilling. But we're, yeah, yeah. luckily market signals are telling us we need to drill. Yeah, so yeah. that's the great thing about bottom up solutions and, you know, market pricing. But just a, that level of sophistication is, is going to come to Bitcoin mining and it's operations mm -hmm. excellence, you know. And this is, we're basically, you know, I, there's so many analogies to the shale business. I always say this is like, you know, Barnett 2000. Mm -hmm four or you know permian 09 where you know the eto daniel horizontal was drilled or something but but really it's a confluence of this is like 1920s i mean i i drove by this was years ago i drove past a gas station i was sitting there and it had shell on it and i was like you know when someone first got oil out of the ground they had no idea gas stations would be a thing mm -hmm. like all these yeah. derivative products that have been built around oil and i think yep. that's where i don't think about bitcoin as just money to me, it's a network like land and what made America great. Um, I, I would largely attribute to property rights. Like if you, if you owned Amen. land, yep. you oh, knew yes. you could farm it and you could make money doing that. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, people built LLCs, people built storefront businesses, you know, and they're all these, all these things we are enjoying mm -hmm. in society that have created value were built upon land. And so Bitcoin is the digital property network and we've got the layer twos and layer threes and all the other things coming. And so we can't even conceptualize where this thing is headed, but we know that it takes every single principle that made America great bottom up solutions. You know, you know, I love Alex de Tocqueville's talking about, you know, when Americans see a problem, they voluntarily get together and solve it. They don't go to the nobles. They don't right. go to the, to the government ask that, you know, some people do, but in America, we have that voluntarism where we can go solve problems. It's the same thing in Bitcoin. You don't like the code propose a new one. And so that's where, 
you know, there is just so much innovation. You've just democratized all, not only energy innovation, but all kinds of new types of internets and businesses and LLCs. And at the same time, I mean, we can talk so much more efficiently because of Zooms and Teams. And so you've got communications are more liquid, money's more liquid. And so the world that we're moving into is just un- going to be unrecognizable. I think what's cool for goosebumps. That's what's cool for me is exactly what Justin said. Is I met each of you through Bitcoin specifically, Mm -hmm. even though we all came from the same industry. And I think if you look ten years, twenty years, fifty years from now, you guys are going to be the Rockefellers of this space, (laughs) right? Think about it. I mean, it sounds crazy, but I think the history books will show. (laughs) We know law school is expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right. I mean, I, I, I think that. You know, these two probably more than me, but they, I mean, my skinny jean comment kind of blew me up from <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bloomberg. Uh, they weren't skinny jeans, by the way. I'm actually wearing the jeans. These are not skinny jeans. I think so. Michael was right. I like Michael. I, I think he was right. On I like skinny, Michael too. On his, he was wrong jeans. on his interpretation of skinny jeans though. Where, <laughs> where the only reason I can maybe agree with you on that is because we started in Texas and Texas has uh, the best private property rights, the best wind energy, the best solar energy, right, nuclear right. deposits. Uh, we got a couple molecules of oil and gas around the state. And so we Just will couple. we will be where uh, any cheap energy, if you know, we, you can do it, we can do it better. And that's yeah. the attitude of Texas. The come and take it is, is still here. And so that uh, just being the bastion of freedom, I think will make, uh, you know, OPEC hash rate meetings in, in the year 2040. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be mm-hmm. right here in H-Town. And the, the, the opportunity here is because our natural resources are huge. And this new bill that's basically subsidizing all the build out for, for more uh, renewable energy that is going to have no market. I don't think they're going to be able mm-hmm. to really build those out without subsidies unless they're mining Bitcoin. No, that, you, know? you this is I do my job for free. There is the federal government has mandated an increased penetration of renewables through the IRA bill mm-hmm. that we will look back on, back on that as like the IDCs for the oil business. Like it yeah. unleashed a lot of innovation and capital to the space. So the IRA bill happened, but that is a top down solution that is absolutely going to bring chaos mm-hmm. to, to the grid, unless you have a bottom up solution that can be flexible on the load side. So the federal government has, is creating some problems. And then we're going to use a bottom-up free market solution to fix it. Right. They're creating a problem that Bitcoin's going yeah, to end up large, solving, which will benefit us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where it's like the Bitcoin and oil companies are going to solve this problem, you know, and we're not asking for any. In fact, I would advocate against the IRA. That's a subsidy. You know, that mis- distorts the market. Um, but it's, yeah, just amazing that all of our industries are going to be involved with, you know, helping advance, you know, all these other innovative technologies. So. Well, and to go back to what you had said too about kind of what's going to come from this, we can't really conceptualize. And people don't remember probably, but literally when I was in high school, which I am older than probably most people in Bitcoin, I know I'm older than all you do. <laughs> um, but man, the internet was not like, I mean, I remember us having class to try to tell us like how to use it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, to think of what, our lifestyles are like now because of the internet is remarkable. Like it's not something that I think any of us would have been able to plan out. It takes time for people to realize what it is and then find a way to utilize that technology within what their plan is and in a use case for it. Same with iPhones. When those came along, it it changed the game for everything. Right. Right. Now you got the entire world in your pocket. Yeah. Right. right. Like, do you even remember what your life was like before you had a an iPhone? Can you watch the Weather Channel? I know. You had to watch the Weather Channel. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, I had TV. I had to yeah. read the newspaper. Like yeah. We went outside more. You yeah, know. we did. We did. And they, you know, there's there was definitely some things that it probably impacted you that we would consider bad. But right? even but like, like I changes. Like yeah, changes. I didn't grow up with grandparents in my in my hometown. And so, mm-hmm. you know, with the phone now, I can, you know, update oh, yeah. my friends, my close family. You FaceTime them. Yeah. I mean, they, we do that uh, with the grandparents all the time. And it's right. the great, I mean, that is the greatest joy. I mean, half of us brought, you know, our kids today, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which they're all running around chaos in the background, but it's the best. The yeah. ungovernables. Yeah. Yeah. Our whole office okay. is going to be destroyed. Yeah. I know. <laughs> the pickleball, there going to be lights down. Yeah. Sorry about the crayons on the walls. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> we left them alone for a little <laughs> bit too long. Uh, so, uh, no, they're being watched. I promise Mrs. Heavy uh, yes. and Mrs. Powell, they're being watched. <laughs>
<laughs> by someone. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, there's uh, th- this whole thing is uh, it's exciting where we're at as an industry, despite the downturn. It's part of the maturity process, in yeah. my opinion, and and it's only going to be better down the road. If you think back again, throwing that story out that uh, about your grandparents and your and your dad, um, you know, thirty eight percent of the wells are dry holes. You know what I mean? It's like. I guarantee you, they went through the same learning curves and and difficulties that the Bitcoin mining industry is going through right now, and so yet another correlation to them in in their kind of maturity process. But um, it's inevitable that things will get better um, from the economic side, but also from the technology side and from the way that uh, more technically disciplined individuals getting into the space and starting to to innovate on the kind of the very rudimentary founding building blocks that we have right now. So I think what's interesting to me, I think that's really stands out is coming from the technology side of oil and gas for the last 10 plus years and seeing whenever I was coming in, I was pitching cloud software to these companies mm-hmm. and they were like, what the fuck is the cloud, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> to fast forward to today and just seeing how this community has, particularly the oil and gas community has rallied behind Bitcoin is mm-hmm. mind blowing to me because oh, yeah. just the, the mindset shift that has taken place over the last decade, particularly mm-hmm. the last probably three to five years. Yeah. It's it's hard for me to wrap my head around it because we were I feel like we were such like laggards compared to everybody else a decade ago and yeah. now we're like it's well and energy dude, backs everything, money yeah. everything moves faster now than it used to yep and this sound I'm not just trying to throw a plug in there for empower but like I honestly felt like even since empower I've felt a big shift in the attitude from a lot of the oil and gas folks like yep. when I, when we first got Jay going I mean. <laughs> It was tough to get anybody to want to do anything. And uh, by now, it's like, I mean, everybody's interested in it. Even in a, a down market, I still I feel a tremendous like momentum behind the whole yeah. industry. And, and a lot of it, I think Empower did a good job of really kind of bringing people out to like learn about it. Oh, 100%. When I first got into Bitcoin mining, one of, the, one of my favorite things that I like to think about and think about in 10 to 20 years where our industry is going to be is when I, you know, growing up, I went to Nate. Mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. my dad and the coolest thing was when my dad would be he walked the whole thing and when he'd see someone and be like oh my gosh joe remember that dry hole we drilled in 1986 <laughs> back in throckmorton <laughs> and like you know and that happened almost you know yeah. three to five times where it's someone he hadn't yeah. seen in a while he caught up and they they didn't talk about oh remember when we sold that big deal it was like remember that shit we went through yeah, yeah. it was like yeah we were drilling we couldn't set surface we my dad my dad I, my father passed away passed away and I I really regret not asking him more stories but you know I'd get these he never really talked a lot about his childhood or you know early on but one of the funniest things I heard he was like yep I got. You know, we dropped a nuclear tool in the hole, and um, that's when I started smoking. And I was up for three days straight. And I, and I was like, "What? What?" And he's like, "Nope." And I was like, "Okay, we're not going to talk about it." <laughs> <laughs> but you know, all those stories of adversity are what I mean. That's the beautiful thing about you know this you know America and this volunteer is like we see risks, we see problems, mm-hmm. we go take them, and the relationships we build along the way is just the absolute mm-hmm. cool. So that's what you know we're bringing our kids. I can't wait to be. 10, 20, 30 years down the road. And yeah. they're like, oh my God, remember, I'm calling this one Fimbleventer because yeah. it's my third Bitcoin apocalypse. <laughs> but it's like the first, and Fimbleventer is an old Norse mythology. I'm trying to make it a meme. So hashtag <laughs> Fimbleventer. But the first you one, spell that, please. It's, it's three consecutive winters in Norse mythology <laughs> where there is no crop and effectively society dies. But um. out of that is birth, you know, something better. And so that's kind of, for me, the first downturn, I mean, I was leveraged to the tits, to Bitcoin, it collapsed, I'm stressed, you know, but then it comes back and you're like, all right, we survived that. Mm. And then the second downturn happens and you're like, okay, this still is really stressful. I don't like it. You know, but then the third one, mm-hmm. you you got friends on the interwebs. You're making right. memes. You've got, you know, like you learn to be like, oh, the apocalypse just happened in Bitcoin. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 I was Isn't born for weird? this. Yeah. Like, so weird. Like, it's oh, so you, weird. this is your first time. I was like, I was born in chaos. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. that's I mean, I've noticed that, too. Like uh, my my concern for the Bitcoin price uh, dropping has disappeared. Like, um, I, I, I don't. I've actually got nervous when it hit like 23 grand not very long ago. I was like, no, not yet. I yeah. need it to stay down for a while. So the best training more. you can get for uh, watching a, a Bitcoin price action in a pair market is an oil and gas. Oh, career, yeah, 100%, 100%, 100%. 100%. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, we were running out of time. But um, 
I do want to say, look, I'm I'm excited to get the show going, right? And uh, I think this was a great yeah, test great that this start. is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, it's going to be a blast. And I, I wanted them two to be the first ones for yeah. a variety of reasons, but two of them, one of them being that both of them, I think, um, are, like I've said, excellent advocates for the industry, especially because you have such a crossover appeal and your experiences in the oil and gas industry combined with what you've been doing over the last few, few years, last several years for you. Um, but also there are two people that I really just admire a lot. Like, I think, uh, even though you guys are younger than me, I, I do look up to you for being, uh, we love you too, substantially <laughs> younger than me. Yeah. Uh, I, I look up to the fact that you guys are, you're the quintessential Texans. Like when I thought of Texas, when I was moving down here, I thought I was going to run into people like you. Um, I didn't so much cause I moved to Houston, but, uh, now meeting you, I'm like, man, they are the epitome of what I thought I was going to meet. But at the same time, they're very, very unique. And yeah. they bring a different kind of thought process, different philosophy from from the, like, unfortunately, we live in a world where everything is like, you're on one side or the other. And I think it's a big problem in our society. And I think that it just continues to push the extremes on both sides um, and, and makes us even more tribal. And uh, I, I think I like the fact that they can talk to anybody. And you guys have a kind of personal philosophies. I don't like talking about politics, but like your personal philosophy is very much take care of yourself and take care of your neighbor, do the right thing um, and stop trying to, you know, police other people's personal yep. moralities and things like that, like freedom and, and truly come and take it. Yeah. Yeah. Come and take <laughs> it. But also like, look, and, I'm and not going to get in your business. Stay out of mine. And, but at the same time, kind of a community feel. So I, I just, I really, have enjoyed getting to know you guys over the last few years. And, and, uh, you know, I mean, I consider you guys two of my, my best well, friends in the space. Triple. Nine. Triple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember the first time we met, it was so fun. Cause we hit it off on criminal justice reform. Right. Right. All right. these other, like if you're in Bitcoin, you're generally a curious mm -hmm. person. I think everything you're talking about is like, look, there's the free market, but then there's like, Hey, how do we be just good humans? And right. You know, my mom always said growing up, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So mm -hmm. how do we really, listen to the other side you know whatever but i think there is i'm very bullish on the future i think bitcoin mm. mining is going to unleash energy innovation but i think yeah the community and the friends we're making on the way is absolutely i mean the memes, agree memes for days yeah <laughs> all, all roads leads to texas uh, that's right it, it does and we got that plug in that in the uh in the uh article the other day with bloomberg as well so yeah it was good yeah but thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Right. Jay, Jake, I'm I'm super excited about this. And no, this is gonna be I it's gonna be, be really good. it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Moving Thanks forward. for having yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed myself. Yeah, we'll uh, we're gonna be doing some more, and I'm sure I will be asking you guys to do this again before too long. As long Maybe as, every other as, long show, as I'm right? allowed to bring my kids again. Then <laughs> yeah. that's all, that's oh, yeah, man, good. kids welcome. I'll, br kids I'll bring mine next time. They'll, yeah. they'll really destroy the place. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring mine to babysit since they're older, too. Like, yeah. I'm going to be like the granddad in this whole industry. Right. Yeah, I wasn't right. going to say it, but you have <laughs> quite got, a bit of gray hair. Well, at least I got a lot of gray hair. That's I'll true. take a Aren't lot Aren't you of like hair. only 40? I, I know. Yeah. I'm <laughs> but in like, I'm the oldest one. In Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, that's old. That's right. You're a dinosaur. Yeah, but I'm going to use it to my advantage as long as I can. But, but thank you guys and uh yeah looking forward to, to more of these and we'll have you back